Before handing it over to our speaker, please let me introduce, many of you already know him. So he has a master's degree in physics from McGill University, a certificate in uh, post uh, uh, in uh, secondary uh, education, and also a secondary finish work in education. Also, he started to teach physics in college in 1994, Collège de Rosemont in 1998. He is interested uh, in pedagogy and uh, active teaching, and he participated as a researcher on research projects on active learning environments uh, subsidized by Paria. Louis is also the author of a few articles in the uh, Pedagogical Review and uh, on active uh, learning, active learning environments. And for those interested, I will put the link in the chat. Since 2020, Louis is a uh, Educational counselor, a guidance counselor at the college. Uh, 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 but he's uh, a, uh, he's interested in thinking about ethical issues of artificial intelligence. He is a guidance counselor, and uh, I will now hand it over to Louis Nuff. So I'm just setting it all up so I can see all of you and interact with you. So have a great webinar, everybody. Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, so today we will talk about a method, if you will, to uh, talk about ethical issues around AI in uh, classrooms. And as uh, Nicole had said earlier, not just in philosophy classrooms, but also other disciplines as well. So this is something that uh, is really interesting that I wanted to present. So firstly, what you will see is the plan of the webinar. And the first thing is we're going to talk quickly about the uh, Declaration de Montréal because it's really our inspiration for this project that you will see. And then we will quickly present the project that uh, gave birth to the uh, toolbox around the issues around uh, deliberative workshops with the students on the ethical issues around artificial intelligence. And I will also provide you uh, some uh, links for other resources that could interest you if you wish uh, to go further in uh, exploring this subject. So we're going to describe the toolbox very quickly. You will have access uh, to it with one of the links that will be shared in the chat later on. There's a French version, an English version of this toolbox that uh, is free, that you can use, share, print as you will. And uh, then we will have a deliberative workshop and you'll understand that because of the format of the webinar, I'm using, uh, I'm getting straight to the point, uh, we're gonna, have the opportunity to uh, explore a case, a use case uh, that is connected to AI, and you will have the opportunity quickly to uh, understand the three parts of our deliberation and the toolbox. So I'll talk about that in a few minutes. First of all, to uh, make this a bit more interactive, I've created a whoop uh, lack event. So if you have your phone, you can uh, uh, simply uh, look at the uh, QR code. You can scan the QR code here. There's also the uh, link, app.wooklab.com forward slash AQPC Delibia. Uh, it's on the screen there. Um, I think Francine, you will share in the chat. Yes. And so I will ask you to connect and then we will use that for our interactive uh, exchanges during the webinar. So I will let uh, people connect. So your whoop clap is not activated, right. It has not uh, been launched yet. So I'm launching the first question, very simple. You introduced yourself earlier in the chat. 
So I want to have an idea statistically of uh, your uh, position. Uh, what uh, position uh, do you hold? Is you a teacher? Are you a teacher, a professional person? Uh, what is your position? So uh, also other uh, is there. So the options are I'm a teacher, I'm a professional, and I am a manager. So there are about 10 teachers. We have a majority of professionals in education, probably guidance counselors. And um, I'm very happy to see that there's a few uh, people from uh, management executives here as well. So the next question, um, I will wait a little bit for that. Uh, we will continue now with the presentation. So earlier I was talking about the Montreal Declaration. It's uh, really our inspiration is the Montreal Declaration that you probably already know. It's quite possible that your college has signed the Montreal Declaration. Many colleges have signed onto it. So the Montreal Declaration is an initiative from University of Montreal that wanted to uh, provide a framework for development of AI in a responsible, ethical, and democratic way. And it's the, the reason uh, uh, why uh, method that we pro propose today exists. There's a 15 workshops that we've had in Quebec, and uh, these uh, are pictures that were taken during these workshops that uh, uh, covered ethical issues and uh, the and uh, results the finality of there are 10 principles of uh, ethics 10 ethical principles that came out uh, of these discussions so of these uh, workshops so you see them here we will refer to them so well-being autonomy solidarity protection of intimate details and private life private information responsibility uh, participation of uh, citizens, participation, equity, uh, inclusion, diversity, and uh, sustainable development. So these are the results of the uh, workshop around the uh, declaration, Montreal Declaration. So what uh, that brings us to the presentation of our project, and uh, I said in the beginning for a, a year or two now. We associate uh, the uh, deliberative these workshops, number workshops around ethical uh, issues. I often do the presentations myself, but with me uh, is a whole team that has worked on that. And I want to uh, mention the important work and underline the work that was done. Pauline Wazou that uh, presented and other researchers that presented a webinar, webinar with me a few years ago on our project. I have colleagues as well that work with me, Stéphane Dallary, uh, philosophy prof, Christian Auger, and other professionals who work uh, with me. It's a project that was funded by uh, the Montreal uh, Centre for Expertise, uh, um, the Inter of Paul of Montreal. Uh, so they've widened uh, their field of action to more than just AI. Now we're talking about the uh, technology uh, and uh, uh, mobilized the researchers and teachers and brought them together from 12 CIGEPs and seven universities that are members uh, of uh, this community. Um, so Mila, which is the uh, Institute in Quebec for Artificial Intelligence, Algo Valad also that Algo Valad uh, uh, is the lab from the University of Montreal. University of Montreal. Uh, so we worked with these uh, uh, groups of people to produce the toolbox that I'm going to uh, present. Um, our project, uh, what we wanted to do was to uh, bring the student to think about uh, ethical considerations, ethical questions around AI at the college and university levels. But now I'm going to concentrate on the college level. We want to bring students uh, to be able to think about these issues in their uh, fields of study and their discipline. So 
It was also to understand the different functions and uh, skills related to intelligence, artificial intelligence, talk about ethical and think about ethical considerations. And because we were interested in the democratic aspect, it was also about sharing, uh, participating democratically and proposing solutions to develop in an ethical and responsible way uh, uh, ethical development of AI. So uh, some regulations and rules and other means to uh, provide a framework for development for AI. So because we want to um, help the students formulate these reflections and think about this and participate democratically and uh, uh, participate in the development of AI, who is best placed to do so? Well, they are our teachers and guidance counselors that are directly involved. So we wanted uh, through the teachers that they uh, understand the Declaration of Montreal and the co-construction process and co-design process. We want to, I uh, wanted to convince you, but uh, favorize whether um, that people, props integrate in their classrooms ethical issues around artificial intelligence, but through uh, co-construction. So what we did is we've developed uh, some module training modules. We gave training to a lot of teachers at Collège de Rosemont, of course, because we were the college that uh, would participate in the project. But uh, we also have widened uh, our scope, our sphere of influence. We had the opportunity to go to other CEGEPs colleges to give uh, training to teachers. Also through all of this to educate the population around ethical issues around AI at the same time. So really widen our scope uh, and our thinking. So that's why we proposed this toolbox. We can't go everywhere, of course, and can't train everybody, but we're gonna produce a toolbox. And this toolbox, uh, people can uh, read it, use it. And when they will uh, choose to do these activities in their classroom, then they can have uh, the tools to do so. Quickly, the toolbox is a document. Um, uh, thank you uh, for uh, providing the link and the WooClap link as well. You can also put the link up for the uh, uh, website, ethicia.com, uh, ethic, uh, uh, and the toolbox uh, uh, is a document that we've produced. What it contains, there are four main sections. There's the presentation of the Declaration of Montreal. So a few pages about that, that will give you more uh, details and context. And for the theoretical part, for the theory part, there's a lot of resources on the internet to understand artificial intelligence, but we wanted to demystify uh, and understand the, the concepts through a different way of doing it. So with myths and reality. So we, we identify the number of myths and facts and it's also looking into the future of ai so we have possible uh, cases that uh, will help us to project ourselves into the future there's a part called acting together where we give tools to uh, deliberate to think about this so the declaration of montreal you can see very quickly there's just uh, some images there on the screen you can download it for free the uh, toolbox on uh, the website that uh, was put up in the chat. We, um, are there, is there research on the explainability of the ease of explanation of AI in certain uh, um, disciplines? I'm not sure I understand the question. The explainability of the ability to, I don't know what you mean by that, maybe to specify a little bit more in the, uh, well, maybe in the Q&A, you can maybe raise your hand and I will give you uh, the microphone. I will carry on uh, while we are waiting. So the second part, you'll stop me if I said, if uh, it's Nicole, sorry, I've been calling you Fasid. I know, I'm sorry. So myths and realities, so, uh, are four myths and facts that uh, we use. This is a, the approach we've used. So AI is infallible. Uh, the, it's a system of control, uh, big brother. 
it can solve all problems and AI will replace humans. So these are myths and uh, facts. So in different texts, we uh, can uh, introduce the different concepts to these myths and facts. So also there's perspective scenarios, there's possible scenarios. We've chosen four uh, families of programs around which uh, we've created possible scenarios. Possible scenarios in theory, these are scenarios that uh, are in the future, but a close future. So I would say, honestly, and if we, we were writing this in 2020, uh, remember that we're not, uh, we're more in possible scenarios for the, uh, not so much in the future, but now in the present. A lot of things happen, especially with the chat GPD that were written in 2020 that are true now. So there's uh, also, um, regardless, even if it's not future, futuristic and uh, some of it's already happened but it helps us to uh, frame our thinking around ethical issues uh, with ai there's also tools to uh, have discussions and debates so the role of the uh, facilitator the quality of uh, the necessary uh, uh, factors for a good discussion and these are the things i'm going to present in the coming minutes so in parallel with all of this we have also produced um, to widen the scope of the programs. We've uh, widened a little bit the different programs or the families of programs for which uh, there is uh, some, or there are some possible scenarios. So we created some uh, podcasts, Utopia. Uh, it's not a super original name, but you'll find that on YouTube. These are some podcasts uh, that you can download or, uh, on itzikia.com. You have access to the, uh, podcast there and uh, we have uh, looked at different areas of study uh, so healthcare uh, things around art creativity ai education we hadn't talked about that in the beginning in our toolbox uh, the uh, working world uh, justice and law and uh, we also are talk about the uh, climate crisis so you can see the uh, different podcasts, the different episodes of the podcasts are always in three parts. First, we present the concepts and the applications of AI in that area. Second, ethical issues. And then finally, not what you have to do, but different uh, courses of action around public policy and possible solutions. So there's always three parts. So related to, and the, the uh, related do one of the disciplines. Can you give us an example of, because uh, I know that you're more uh, in physics, but it would be interesting to, well, there's one on mental health. So around uh, nursing and psychology, uh, there's one around the with climate crisis. We uh, do a podcast more for people in science or technical uh, disciplines. So we also have people uh, that are interested more in psychology around love and thought and the scenario uh, on the culture conservation of languages. So that's in the toolbox. And what you see here, these are different uh, areas of study, art, creation, uh, the working world. I don't remember all of them because I didn't uh, participate in all of them. Some of them are uh, around work and maybe more for professionals, maybe uh, uh, the, um, the guidance counselors and teachers can listen to them and uh, uh, maybe uh, glean something from them, learn from them. And we'll also talk about uh, law and we can talk about social sciences and healthcare. Uh, uh, we haven't touched on everything exactly, but I think there's a way to uh, find uh, 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 what you're looking for in the different families of programs. Thank you. So the next slide, you have the website that was shared in the chat. So it's ikia.com. And so there's the information there, the teams, you have access to podcasts. So through that website, you really have access to uh, what we have produced uh, through the years uh, of the uh, project being funded by the Montreal Center for AI in uh, Superior Education. And I will 
to start, uh, finish presenting the project and go and go, we're not going to have a live debate i'm just going to talk about the different steps that we uh, go through in these discussions and debates and nicole i will ask you maybe some of you to uh, speak because i might need some clarification uh, for certain things so what we're going to do is we're going to debate same we'll clap as before i put the qr code up uh, on the screen you had the QR code from before, it's the same one. Um, and maybe Francine, you can put the uh, Nicole. I keep calling you Francine, I'm sorry. I'll put the link up. Thank you, Nicole. Nicole, yes. Oh my God, I'm sorry. So before we begin, I will uh, just go back to the question. I'm going to present the distinction between uh, discussion and debate, deliberation and debate, if you will. So we can talk about ethical issues in different ways uh, with uh, the students. We can do it uh, in all kinds of forums. For us, there's all, uh, often the debate format. It's not the same thing as deliberation or discussion. So the spirit of deliberation and discussion is really a co-construction kind of thing. People discuss amongst themselves, come to conclusions, consensus, solutions together. So it's really in a democratic process of discussion and deliberation. You can also have a debate separate the class in two for against and using AI in certain areas, for example, can be debated and uh, have uh, arguments for and against uh, to convince because debate in principle, there's really um, the winner and a loser of the debate. It's more of a binary thing because you have to convince the other side. You have to convince the people listening that our reasons are better than the opposition. And so we can express ourselves and come to a consensus and find solutions. So there are some questions uh, in uh, the Q&A tab. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, debate deliberation is the only way to uh, we can do it differently. I'm approach. Uh, I'm proposing a, di a different approach. There are three main parts in a discussion uh, deliberation. The first is reading a possible scenario. So it's really the starting point of uh, the co-creation process. So we can't start from nothing and talk about development of uh, AI in a responsible way without uh, something to frame our thinking and some example to hang our thinking on. So uh, we start the discussion then. So once the possible scenario is there, was read by these students, then we uh, uh, go to the next steps, which is really the heart of the deliberation. So it's really in two parts. The first one is identifying ethical issues. Then uh, it's identifying recommendations of public policy. So in general, a debate a discussion under three hours is a bit difficult to do because what well, depends on the number of people uh, of course involved in the uh, deliberation the discussion because if you really want to come to a consensus and discussions that are enriching and that uh, people have uh, an opportunity to contribute and express themselves so it takes a certain amount of time for the class on Montreal, uh, there are different discussions that you saw uh, in the, the images beforehand these are discussions that would last practically a whole day. So you can see that this is something relatively extensive, but you can do it in three hours, have a, a discussion with the, the students. Does it require a maximum number of participants? Because if it's three hours, that's a lot of time in uh, one session. And one, uh, is this, Going to do this in a wider scope or bring the students of a program of study to participate uh, collectively maybe well nicole you are asking a very important question there and it's one of the challenges to implement uh, these uh, workshops these discussion workshops if we want to discuss we need uh, groups of five six people so it uh, uh that's what I was going to talk about uh, is some of them are, are in the classrooms. So they need people who will facilitate or people who will be students who will 
uh, facilitate uh, some groups for discussion in classroom. If not, you can do it outside the classroom with maybe colleagues who can help uh, facilitate and uh, lead uh, uh, discussion groups. So for discussion, we can start as a big group, but when we get to the next, the last two steps, you have to be smaller groups. So maybe uh, a, a group of experts or a cooperative approach, because in a larger group with 30 people at the same time, it's this is not the formula that uh, would be uh, the preferred one. We would need to use another approach. What I do here for the webinar, because uh, it's an online format also that makes uh, things uh, more complex. But we'll come back to that. Bruno was asking the question, how do you prepare a uh, discussion in a, a deliberation in a three hour class? Uh, what are the follow up activities and what are the preparatory activities? So, I will get to that at the end of my presentation. I'm just going to I will conclude with that. I will take the time to do that. We can discuss uh, that further. So uh, yes, I was going to cover them. Thank you. You're welcome. So these are the three main steps. Reading this scenario, it's not very long. It's a few minutes because it's uh, not uh, all that long. As I said, and the other two parts are the. Uh, uh, more uh, time intensive, more important uh, parts. Uh, so for identifying the possible issues to make that quicker, we can put some time limits or number uh, limits uh, on, the, so on, uh, on the number of issues we want to cover. So we can agree to, for example, uh, come to a consensus with a certain number of issues. So usually it's three, but we can go down to two or one issue even depending on the time and the number of people, we can be flexible. Same thing for identifying recommendations of public policy. You will see that we're gonna identify for each of the issues, we're gonna identify a recommendation of public policy, and we can reduce the number of recommendations we want to arrive at to avoid eternal discussions or discussions that go on too long in a limited time frame in the classroom, for example. So I will, uh, quickly get into the reading of a possible scenario that I produced. Uh, it's not in the PowerPoint, I'm sorry about that. I produced that thanks to AI. So I want to mention that I'm not the one who wrote it. I worked on it a little bit, but I uh, used a uh, co-pilot. So this is up on the screen now. Should I read it, Nicola? If you will, please. So, this is the scenario. Sarah, a student in uh, social sciences in CEGEP, just handed in her research project on social challenges related to using social media uh, with young people, so social issues with social media. Throughout the process of writing, Sarah has used the chat GPT actively to refine her ideas, improve the syntax, the grammar, or the uh, quality of her writing. And she also mentioned using chat GPT in the section uh, of recognition and recognizing the people who helped her in her project. Shara's project examines the impact of social media on identity construction for adolescents. And she took great care to cite her sources, including those who influenced her thinking when she was using chat GPT. Sarah's teacher finds herself in a delicate situation. On the one hand, she recognizes the importance for students to use technological tools to improve their capacities for writing. On the other hand, she's wondering, questioning the possibility that the intensive usage of Pat GPT can negatively influence the creativity uh, for the students, so the individual creativity of the students. So she is also preoccupied with the question of the originality of the work and is wondering to what extent usage of AI can be considered help, uh, an acceptable form of help in uh, writing for a uh, college. So the teacher is wondering if she should evaluate Sarah's project only on the basis of the content and ideas, or if she must consider the role of ChatGPT in the creation of uh, the final uh, project. So she's wondering on the uh, about the transparency of the usage of uh, artificial intelligence and academic work uh, at the college level and how it can impact the intellectual integrity of the students. Excellent scenario. Yes. 
So I think it speaks to a lot of features, but also questions that uh, uh, the guidance counselors uh, can have as well. So the first part is what are the main issues in this uh, scenario? So an ethical issue is uh, when a principle or a value or a moral uh, imperative is uh, called into question or judgment. So I'm just going to zoom in here. We have in the toolbox um, some um, axioms uh, around ethical issues. So these are the same uh, ones uh, in the Montreal Declaration. But it's not an exhaustive list. You can choose uh, other ethical uh, issues or considerations as well. So uh, what I'm asking you to do for the next part, and I'm going to uh, pull up uh, my screen here. So you should see on your computer or your phone, indicate uh, the main ethical consideration in this scenario. So you can write that down. If you need, you can click on uh, this image here to uh, refer to it, the 10 main ethical considerations on the PowerPoint presentation. So I'll give you two minutes to write them down in a uh, work class. There's somebody, Nicole, who uh, uh, doesn't have access to wood clap, wood clap, so I put the link up. Thank you. While you write, I'm going to uh, usually when you write in the scenario, it's people write on a post-it the main uh, issues depending on the time you have people write a certain number of uh, you can choose one two or three of them depending on how much time you have people present them and have to define them because presently we see the evolution of the word cloud we see that some of them come back a lot but it doesn't mean that somebody who wrote uh, uh, about one ethical consideration has the same definition as their neighbor so Sometimes two different words can be grouped around the same uh, ethical consideration or issue, but can be defined differently by people. So that's the role of the facilitator to get everybody to participate. We go around the table, then we uh, regroup around these questions that the people have asked, and then everybody has an opportunity to participate. So there's some rules, of course, that we have to all uh, respect. Um, we have to uh, respect everybody, of course. And we can have in certain meetings, certain uh, uh, debate, uh, discussions, uh, sorry, uh, workshops with people who are uh, very pro I uh, uh, or very much against, and there can be frictions. And it's okay that these people have uh, some strong positions um, or uh, really strong positions on AI, uh, one side or the other. So it's important to bring these people together so that there's a dialogue, so that we uh, really get to identify what's important, what uh, 
um, are the things that affect the development of AI. So we can see that the, uh, the word cloud is stabilized. There are three main terms that uh, come up. There's uh, autonomy, there's integrity, and equity. These are the three main ones. There's responsibility also that's there. And then somebody talked about equity and autonomy. So uh, 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 intellectual autonomy and also uh, really skills. So uh, real skills and uh, as opposed to just skills. So in defining it that way, we can see if there's any relationship with other ethical uh, considerations or issues. So the idea is to come to a consensus. So what I uh, wish is uh, what I would like, if you uh, want to, please uh, raise your hand. I would like one person to raise their hand and explain what they mean by autonomy. So one of the people who wrote autonomy can you raise your hand, please, and explain to us quickly uh, uh, what uh, you, you mean by autonomy? So you can raise your hand and I will give you the mic. Or maybe if there are other people who would like to comment on uh, this term, uh, this uh, Ethical consideration, uh, uh, autonomy. So if you, you raise your hand, I will give you the microphone. People are not used to, oh, there's a question here. I'm going to go see. It's Kadirik Bilak. So please open up your microphone. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I think autonomy is when we make our own decisions and you use chat GPT, I think I'm not the one deciding, it's the machine who's deciding. So for me, autonomy is, uh, is uh, uh, self choice. Auto is self and uh, Noma is rule. So you set your own rule to make your own choices. So they, if the machine or the uh, AI is deciding for me, then um, up to what point does the AI decide for me? How? Does my autonomy come into play? Am I really the one making decisions? Or uh, maybe there's uh, a bit of a balance there. I understand that you have to, it's, some people want to use these uh, tools, but a, a student at Bishop understands that they decide or the machine or the AI decides because, or a teacher or that will tell us uh, what to say or what to think. Well, in Sarah's case, uh, how you apply that in Sarah's case? Well, in Sarah's case, it's um, what I see is that because she uh, calls on something outside uh, of herself, how much autonomy does she have on this third party, if you will? So, yes, it, she thinks it's me. Uh, I'm the one who thinks this and I wrote this. and. Yes, uh, I wrote it, but there are parts where I'm not sure, but uh, it'll be okay. I will uh, let that uh, pass, and because chat GPT is uh, pretty good. Yes, thank you, Kedirik. Sylvain Desotel, who wrote Autonomy, two points, capacity of the students to uh, uh, finish the thinking process on their own, to get to the end of their thinking on their own. So thank you, Sylvain. I will uh, uh, be satisfied with that. We won't continue with all the other points, but the uh, facilitator has to be able to, uh, depending on the number of ethical considerations that we want to cover for the second part, there uh, is really something uh, that uh, we can do here. And it's equity, integrity. So because we don't really know what uh, equity and integrity means really for everybody, it's a bit difficult to, uh, because when we talk about autonomy, I see in the definition by Frédéric, there's a connection with real skill. The, the student that um, uses chat GPT for their ideas, we see that it's a student that uh, was a model a student where they cited their sources and they were transparent in the usage of chat GPT, but the ethical issue remains. 
because uh, the skill that we evaluated that the student or the teacher must evaluate or something else. But I think you said it earlier, it's the machine, it's the AI or Sarah. So that's how I interpret it myself. So just uh, taking that out here. So we won't do it for all the ethical considerations, but for the ones that, uh, well, the main one, which is autonomy, the, uh, primal, pr the first one that came out. So the main ethical issues, because we have to, we can't cover all of them, we'll cover some. So what we do then, the next step is identifying recommendations around public policy that we can put in place to uh, respond to these ethical concerns or uh, considerations. So we're uh, in ethical development of AI. We're in a situation that uh, happens in a CEGEP, a college. Uh, we are talking about uh, recommendations around public policy. So everything around um, the coordinated action of a uh, institution or public authority to uh, obtain a modification or evolution. So we're talking about an authority. So when an um, when ethical uh, considerations or principal scenarios talk about situations in society, well, often we will talk about uh, the authorities. So the state uh, uh, organizations that have uh, authority over uh, society. So uh, for us, it could be the state, it could be the province, the uh, federal government, or the college, or the CEGEP that has some authority on these policies, rules, regulations. So when we talk about public policy, uh, we talk about concerted action, not necessarily action that an individual can undertake, but in the case of Sarah, uh, the teacher can do certain things, but that's not what we're trying to do in development of AI and the responsible of AI. What we're trying to do is to see what are the concerted actions with the different actors that are above the different people. So here, in this case, maybe the college, the minister, the state. So it'll be up to you to see. So because we have Are you okay, Louis? Yes, I have to create the question. So you should see it. Um, the type of recommendations on public policy. You have different categories on the PowerPoint presentation. So uh, legal considerations, research programs, uh, digital tools, institutional uh, uh, stakeholders, ethical uh, codes of conduct, uh, uh, codes of ethics and conduct, training, uh, evaluation of AI, and uh, mechanisms for participation. So mechanisms for participation, and uh, so those are, and what would be recommendations of public policy? You can also talk about the different stakeholders who would be responsible for uh, putting in place or implementing your recommendations. You can write uh, them on the screen. I'm just gonna share that. I will take one minute, then we want to, uh, finish with the main recommendations and the question of you know uh, the presentation and yes there are other questions as well yes i see that uh, thank you so you can write them up on the uh, screen
still looking at the word cloud. I've uh, decided to pick one uh, of the terms. Uh, so you can choose two or three if you have time. So we look at the different uh, issues of public policy recommendations and will be different for each of them. So we've chosen autonomy and then you uh, will recommend, I should have asked you to write only one. It's okay if you have many. So one public policy recommendation. So we talked about, we talked about training. That's what really came out here in the word cloud. So there are things to specify. And I see that training is the largest word in the word cloud. So I imagine we're talking about training for students on responsible usage of uh, uh, AI tools and uh, evaluation or uh, in uh, pro uh, academic projects. So I see um, that the ethics code, because there are people who, uh, yes, I see uh, ethics here on the bottom. If people uh, talked about the code of ethics, I would be curious to hear you on how you see uh, things. That'll be our uh, last question before the conclusion. So can you repeat your question, please? Yes, the people who wrote code of ethics, will you be comfortable explaining how you see this recommendation related to public policy? Maybe somebody could raise their hand and explain uh, what they wrote and give details. Nobody has raised their hand so far. So why we wait? I see PEIA, people have to work at modifying their policy. It's one of the ways of evaluating to consider that uh, this new uh, tools, this conversational robots, generative AI and other technology uh, in uh, the uh, evaluation of, uh, so uh, uh, Wasmo College, I can say that for uh, um, fraud or plagiarism with AI, we now ask the teachers to have uh, interviews or uh, hearings. So some people do it systematically in the evaluation uh, of uh, work or projects. So I imagine evaluate uh, things uh, in a, a written form, but also orally. So to make sure that uh, the skills are really there. So it's a way to, uh, uh, have that in institutional policies uh, and uh, regulations uh, at different departments uh, in educational institutions with so different structures that regulate the usage of AI uh, in uh, an institution. So is it always in a context, because I know that in Belgium, uh, uh, did a workshop uh, in Belgium, students can use chat GPT. Is it a context where students can use it. What context in students can use in it? So you're mentioning, uh, depending on the the position of the establishment, how they position themselves, can the students use it? Yes or no? And what context can they use it in? So that can be part of the recommendations about public policy. The college has to position themselves in a policy and a, a policy document, maybe on uh, the uh, framework around the rules and usage of. Uh, AI and uh, uh, it can be part of recommendations uh, uh, that are emitted by uh, the college or institution. So all our discussions then would be around that and to agree on a certain number of recommendations that we would put forward. So here, if we really had more time, what we could have chosen to do, and that's a great uh, exercise that we can bring uh, the students along uh, with us and do uh, could, could have decided we write a memoir and we send this to all the colleges and uh, to uh, uh, feed their thinking around uh, this around the, uh, after a three to six hour uh, 
process of discussion and emitting recommendations for public policy for different colleges or institutions. So what's interesting to us, we want to transfer this in classrooms. We have uh, uh, ethical issues and considerations around the usage of AI in your system or your college. So it could be a letter to the uh, minister or a professional college or a website or an association. We create something that can bring students to be active and play a role, uh, an important role uh, in uh, the framework around usage of AI. So it's really in this spirit of discussion and bring these students into the process as participants. So really the spirit of the deliberative uh, workshops, instead of debate, uh, we really more discussion and deliberation. So I will uh, stop there. Thank you for your participation. And I will close with this last part, which uh, is how do we apply deliberation or discussion in classes uh, at colleges? So Nicole, you talked about uh, challenges around uh, deliberative workshops or discussion workshops to talk about the number of students. That's an aspect, uh, the main challenges, uh, those are the main challenges. So the facilitation of uh, groups, uh, of smaller groups, because you can't uh, do it as well with 30 people, maybe with 10 people it uh, works well, but five or six is optimal. So not a lot of things we can do uh, except having other people who come and support uh, the teacher and uh, training students as facilitators or uh, using colleagues uh, to lead uh, uh, smaller groups and planning this activity uh, outside of the classroom, for example. That's always a possibility as well. Could be a panel, maybe? A discussion panel? Yes, absolutely. You can have a panel in the front. And yes, of course, the students are less um, active participants, but they can experience this and seeing experts uh, even if they're students, they can see you know, what other people think and what they do. And they're not as active, of course, but I, it's not as good, but it's better than nothing. So um, make sure the students are engaged. It's a challenge, of course. Will the students participate in this type of activity? Uh, what uh, are the ideas we can put in place? Maybe uh, add this to the courses. Uh, ensure that it fits in with the objectives of your class of your curses and the intentions of your program and etc because if you do this and you don't connect that with the, the skills uh, that you seek to develop in your class or your program it can uh, maybe uh, call into question the usefulness of the activity it could be a challenge so we could also prepare the students to the uh, with uh, to do the activity and bringing them uh, around thinking uh, about using AI. There's a colleague of mine in computer science, I'm Marie Bose. I'm naming her because I was really impressed by what she's done. She uh, helped her students think about the different uses of AI and think about that uh, before. She didn't do the discussion uh, groups and deliberations, but she had some guided reflection, uh, some guided thinking in her classroom. It was very interesting. We could also read about myths and facts around AI in the toolbox or the different uh, scenarios. So we can uh, gain some time by having the students read that. And we can also associate that uh, with an, uh, a portfolio or a journal that will be evaluated. We can describe the, the student position at the beginning and we see the after, the before and after. So we're uh, throughout the process. So it's uh, connected with objectives from your courses. That's something you can do. Of course, there's the whole logistical question of workshops. We do it sometimes online. I haven't talked really about that, but we need an appropriate space with some whiteboards uh, and some flip charts, and uh, you need some markers, some post-its to be able to uh, display and share the, the uh, different uh, opinions and uh, the, the discussions, and that can uh, help. I have a $100 question, Louis because there's three minutes left. Frédéric Jalak was asking, from what I understand from the presentation, teaching is not uh, easy as it was, but there's a lot of elements that we can uh, comment on equity, diversity, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, can you train the people around all of this, uh, all of these issues? In uh, addition to their uh, classical training as uh, uh, 
Well, uh, I to become a teachers today is not easy because there's a lot of considerations. Society is evolving, and um, because you are doing very complex work, so I have uh, no further answers. But can we train students? Well, of course, the line of thinking around that I will give you is that the initial uh, the individual initiatives are interesting on the individual level, but I would invite you to think at a program level, to think about programs and not having on your shoulders all the training of people uh, in your uh, programs. For example, ethical issues around AI, if you want to talk about that in your class, you can do that maybe, uh, but uh, maybe it would be relevant uh, or a business choice to talk about it with others and to have your colleagues participate, to have a concerted approach so that uh, uh, one person doesn't carry the full weight on their shoulders. So that's the program approach and to make sure that uh, everybody who is involved in uh, teaching acts uh, um, in the same direction or is on the same page because if not, it's difficult. So it's easy to say, but not as easy to do. It was Mario Boisseau who wanted to speak. There's one minute, Marion. So Marion, uh, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to thank you. That's all. Sorry. So there's one minute left. I will end with my conclusion and uh, references you have in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, uh, once again, uh, around, this is the toolbox that is on the uh, website. The link is in the chat. I want to mention the extraordinary work that was done by Fernand Trudeau and Ernesto Morin, André Lorando College. They wrote, uh, they uh, produced with, uh, I don't know if UCAM or Investment Royale, I'm not sure which, but they have uh, a reference uh, base on ethics and, uh, and a great document that is a, a very rich reference document on AI and ethics that you can use uh, and add it to your toolbox. Uh, they've already done a webinar here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, at the AQPC webinar, so I would invite you to uh, read their document. It's a great uh, resource. Thank you, Louis, for this uh, wonderful presentation. And I think that uh, what you uh, presented is uh, the toolbox, so people can go and dig deeper and adapt these tools depending on their discipline and their needs. Uh, so uh, I. Uh, Looking forward to uh, having more webinars with you in the future. Thank you, everybody. And we will see you uh, next week for the next uh, webinar and uh, around uh, programs of study and transverse uh, skills. So we will uh, be back uh, next week. And thank you again, Louis, and see you soon. Thank you to all the people participating. And it was very interesting and enriching. Thank you.